in this lesson I'm going to show you how to make this wave ring. Check it out. I'm starting with a piece of sterling silver round wire. This is 1.6mm uh, in diameter and the length of this is 30 centimeters. so this should be enough to make five rings. So I'm using my mandrel, the very pointy end, just to start shaping the end. Now start wrapping it around the mandrel. Now this is quite a small size, so what I'll do is uh, once I've wrapped it around, I'll budge it up the mandrel until I get to the size I want, which I've not actually decided yet, but uh, if you're making this for a customer, obviously you're gonna get the right finger size, but make sure that you uh, make the rings at this stage a good few sizes smaller. overlapped. I'll aim to make this to size M so the ring finished will be size M. Now what's going to happen is when I flatten these rings it's also going to open the rings out uh, slightly. I'll probably gain around about a size maybe two sizes so uh, I'm just going to push it up to size K and then I can I can uh, do the final sizing once I've flattened them. So that's the coil. It's size K at this end and size K at this end here. So now I'm going to cut them apart to make the five rings. So if you use snips to do this, then it does distort the ends. So that's why I'm cutting it. overlap and line the ends up on each of the rings ready for soldering. I've cut uh, five pieces of hard solder and um, just flux the joints. I'll use a solder pick just to make sure that the solder actually melts onto the joint and doesn't jump onto one side or the other. So you need to make sure you get the heat dis distribution correct. And it's just jumped over to one side but I've still got the tail of the uh, solder latched onto this side so I'll just concentrate the heat on that side and there we go. Now make sure that they're perfectly round. You don't have to worry about getting them perfectly flat just yet. And for each one, just make sure that you've got the same size. I'm working right on the edge of the flat stake and I'm keeping my fingers as far away as possible. work my way around the ring and I'll check to see what kind of size difference I've got. Okay this has gone up just over one size so if you're finding that you are striking your fingers uh, it does hurt a lot so um, to be on the safe side you can use a little bit of masking tape to just hold the uh, ring onto the stake. Uh, it's a bit fiddly though and you have to keep turning it as you go but at least it saves smashing your fingers up. Okay. 
So I've got the uh, the ring to 1.2 mil thick, and um, just check the other one. Make it sure I'm consistent. Yep, same. I might just flatten them a little bit more. I think around about 1.1 mil should be about right. Now I'm back on the mandrel. I'm going to use my chasing hammer this time just to make sure the rings are perfectly round. And this should budge them up a fraction more as well. Now Emery finish the sides. So all the rings are flat and clean, ready for soldering, but I'm going to just find where each of the solder joints are uh, because I want to make sure that they are all at the top. So if, if they're at the bottom where I'm going to be soldering them, because of all the work I've done on the rings, uh, the solder could uh, sweat and the ring would just pull apart. So all the solder joints are going to be at the top. But now with the marks on top there I can just put around about 15 mil um, area on both sides. Just paint the flux on. ensure that the black marks all line up. And just bind the ring up. Do a little bit of binding wire. I'll put another loop of binding wire on the other side of the fluxed area. And I'll just repaint over with the flux. So you can see it's an area that's perhaps a little bit less than a third of the way around the ring. And there is a chance that the solder may run a bit further, but we're going to try and control it and keep it in this area. So I've pre cut some pieces of um, medium solder and um, we'll see if we need any more than that I'll just um, you can actually run the solder in rather than place little pieces on but uh, if you do that it's very easy to overdo it and um, then you will have the solder running too far around the ring and you won't get that um, the uh, open design that I'm after. So the rings may open up a fraction as the uh, flux starts to move around and dry. Just going to leave the little solder balls on the joints and um, then I'll heat it up to the right temperature and allow the solder to run.
just need to get a bit more solder onto the end ring there. I don't think that's taken off. Now if you find that uh, the solder is running further along one joint and not the one next to it, it won't really matter. We can have a, a staggered um, open open um, split as the, uh, the shank turns into the head of the ring. It can look a little bit more attractive that way. And I think that looks as though it's run. I'm not going to overheat it because then I know the solder will take off and go too far around. So it looks as though it stopped at the point where the uh, flux wa was uh, stopped. So I'm going to allow that to cool and I'll check to make sure that the solders run on the underside as well. I can see that the solder has run on the inside. So I don't need to apply any more solder. Uh, so make sure that you remove the binding wire before you put it in the pickle. And uh, I'm not going to file the top here because that's going to be shaped in a minute. But I just want to establish the shank of the ring first. So uh, that's made it a little bit thinner, but it is quite thick there for a ring anyway. I'm going to leave the uh, as much of the thickness here on top of the ring as possible. Uh, so now I'm just going to tap it around. And get the right shape. Now I'll just use a pen knife um, to open up the rings at the top and just pull the two sides open and then as you can see there's a lot of options now at this stage So the design I'm going for with this is to have a random wave design. So um, there will be touching points in the middle here and it will make it a lot more secure. Uh, to do that I'm going to use these uh, fine round nose pliers so I can get the wave started right at the end here, I'm working on the second ring here. and. I'm using a levering action so I'm not pinching the metal, I'm not squeezing it, I'm just holding the pliers at around about three or four mil apart at the end and I'm just going to twist the pliers around like that and it'll kick the metal over that way. So now I'll, I'll move along and um, get the pliers in the, op the other direction and then I'm going to twist the pliers down this is going uh, clockwise as I'm looking down now so make sure that the one jaw is in the curved part of the wave there and then kick it over like that so now I've got a nice smooth bend in the metal there so again it gets one of the jaws into the curve here and the other one just a little bit further away around about three or four mil and again just give it a twist like that and I'm gripping as I'm twisting and that'll just uh, help me to create that wave. It might take you a few minutes to get to grips with doing this but you'll see that uh, once you've done a couple then it gets quite easy. And because it's random, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit, uh, you've got a soft curve on one and a, um, an angled curve on the other one. So, um, just see how 
Neat you can get it though. And I can encourage the metal to just come around a little bit more there. And there. Now I've opted to keep the the end uh, rings dead flat but you can actually curve those as well totally up to you now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I don't want to follow that pattern so that it just runs the same way I'm going to try and uh, go the opposite way so I need to put my pliers in at this point here and twist anti-clockwise to kick the metal out there like that and do the opposite right next to it Yeah, that looks pretty good and um, start to think that if I just had the um, the four rings then that would look really neat and you could put settings into those gaps there but um, that's not the case with this one so um, to do the same thing for this one making sure that um, I open the, the ring out where it's opened out here so it's it's got a nice gap there that I can stick a setting in if I fancy. to just pull out the end ring so that I can get uh, a curve going on down here. So now I'm just going to fiddle about with it to try and make it look a little bit more random rather than uh, symmetrical. Um, so you can see that that one, I've just moved the curve down a little bit further there. Also need to make sure that I have got a few contact points to keep the top part together. So if I just run solder on this point here or that point there, I can just see a solder joint there so I'll probably do it there and then I can get a solder joint just here and then one here and that will hold the ring together happy with that. I'm just going to put it onto my mandrel and uh, give it a little bit of a tap because I've got, um, got a little bit of a step there. So I don't want to be filing too much off and making it too thin so I'll try and um, just level it off as much as I can on my mandrel. Just be very careful taps with my chasing hammer. Open it up a little bit so I'll um, just get those contact points back again. I'm 
I'll just uh, try and level it up a bit better with my half round pliers, that looks better. I mean, it might not look round when you look at it here, but once I've soldered it, I can uh, work on getting the right shape. Okay, it's ready for soldering now. Just level that joint up there, and um, just, uh, I'm going to solder all the contact points that I can find, and that will make it really nice and solid. And um, then I can work on getting the right shape. I uh, just need to level this part up here. Up. Okay, I'm going to be using medium solder again, and that will um, give me an option later to use another solder grade, uh, use easy grade, if I decide to uh, put settings in. So I could put little tube settings in there, which would look really cool. Okay, that should be um, nice and solid. So I'll pickle that and then I can start cleaning it up. Just get one joint in there. Now I'll work on getting the top part of the ring into the right shape. Now I've uh, got the inside of the ring nice and smooth and for the top of the ring, the shank, um, once it's filed up it's going to look like a solid shank, uh, but when it comes to the separate pieces at the top here, I'm not going to file the whole thing flat, um, I quite like that undulating um, uh, look of it when you look this way. I want it a little bit up and down so the natural contour that it's taken on now I think uh, looks good. So um, what I'll do is I'll just um, tidy up all the solder joints and um, I'll emery, emery clean it and uh, in some cases here I can see some dents where I uh, twisted the pliers inside there so I'll very carefully tidy up inside as well. finish off cleaning up around the detail here with this brownie disc. Uh, this has worn down quite a lot. It started off uh, like this. This is a greenie and uh, that's for um, the finishing. It'll take it up to a polish but I'll just get rid of the tool marks with this first and then uh, swap over to the greenie. And once I've done this, I'll put it in the tumbler, tumbler for a while and then we'll take a look. And there we have it. And as you can imagine with this technique, there's so many possibilities. Hope you enjoyed. Mm -hmm.